to a new no-code tutorial for no-code HQ. In today's tutorial, I want to show you how to connect two separate Bubble applications to one another in various different ways using Bubble's internal built-in Bubble app connector. So why would you want to do that? Well, basically, um, we have a few applications as well that are live that are connected in a way like this because uh, um, maybe a standard example would be you have something like um, Uber. Um, or similar to something like Uber, a ride hailing app, and you have two kind of applications, one for the actual riders, uh, maybe an app where they can see the rides and maybe um, yeah, accept them and so on and so forth, and then a customer facing app where they can book rides and so on and so forth. Um, you might or you, you could uh, create both basically facing apps within one bubble app, um, but there are also advantages of creating two separate apps because you have two separate databases. For example, in, uh, with the ride hailing example, this would mean two separate user uh, databases. You just have the users that are riders in the one app and the actual customers in the other app. So um, there are definitely uh, advantages to using this method. But then obviously you want to connect your bubble applications to one another. One option would be is to simply expose um, an API by one of the applications or by both applications. We have a few tutorials showcasing how to expose APIs and then use them, connect them. But Bubble actually offers you a, a nice and easier and intuitive way of connecting two applications to one another using the so-called Bubble App Connector. And we're going to take a look at that today. So uh, I have two applications here. One of these applications is called uh, On Hover Effect and the other one is called Clock, Clock Test. These are just two different applications. Uh, just random applications that we use for plugin showcases, so no real functionality. Here in this application, I have a data type called all, uh, listings. And we, as you can see, I have four listings here created. There is no information. We basically just have a name, um, but that's exactly what one, one I have. And then in this um, main application, let's assume this is our main application. I have a few things here, but our goal is to kind of get all of the listings that are in the secondary application. I'm just going to label that here for you. So let's say this is our secondary application. It doesn't really make a difference what is primary or secondary. Uh, I'm just going to label it for you for better understanding. So this is our secondary application. And let's just assume this is kind of, we're kind of running Airbnb marketplace. Um, and uh, this is for the um, hosts and they can submit their new listings here, manage bookings and so on. Uh, and obviously you want to always pull in the newest listings from our um, yeah, host app into our customer facing app. So I'm just going to make a new page here, call this customer. Okay. All right. So the first thing we we'll have to do is head over to plugins and want to create or add a new plugin and simply search for app connector, which is the official plugin by uh, bubble and allows you to access another bubble app through API calls. Okay. Let's install that. All right. So, so let's add a new bubble app. This is the um, easiest way to do that. And now obviously we have to add the name, the actual app domain. And this is usually either you can just preview your application, copy the URL, but in, in, in all cases, this is always just the name of your actual bub uh, bubble application, the name you gave at the beginning. In my case, I called it unhover effect tot and just add dot bubble apps dot IO. And this is always the, um, yeah, the app domain. You can see it already recognizes the app name and the icon. I didn't change it yet. Um, and then you want to add the private key and the private key is basically just an API key. You can generate that in the secondary application here. If I go to settings, uh, API, I'm going to, um, where is it? Enable workflow API and enable data API like this. And then I'm going to head over to generate a new API token and we can just copy this token um, like this. All right. Let's paste that here. Is it correct? No, it didn't copy the whole thing. No. So we have our uh, um, yeah information entered, and now the question is match versions live versus dev. I would recommend to check this. What would this do? This will basically separate, and it will match the development version of your one application to the development version of your other application, and match the live version to the subsequent live version. Um, unchecking this might become a bit confusing. So I would just recommend to, to, to match this, do some testing in the dev version. And then obviously once you're ready, you have the live version and it's synced with the live version. Okay. So now we can add an API call uh, and you can see we have uh, actually no API calls here at all yet. Um, so we're going to do exactly that. We're going to head over here back to on hover effect tutorial, the name of the application. 
and I'm going to enable the data API for our listing and for our user. Okay, so I just checked that and let's go back and see what happens. Let's refresh the app metadata and see. All right, great. We have two calls installed listing and user. So let's use our listing. Okay, and you can see the listing we're going to use as data and authentication should be the API key. And we're gonna, gonna add another API call in this case, user. Okay, and now is the question: How do you want to use the user? Do you want to just access user information from the Bubble application, so basically use it as data and then see and how you want to use it, or do you actually want to allow users to basically um, log in with their account in one application in the other application? Okay, so basically right now, if we would change that here now, we could allow users which are here in their in the admin app or in the um, host app with their user account to automatically be logged in here as well okay in order to do this we would have to change a few things we have to first change the authentication method to uh, o authentication and then we have to go back here to our secondary application and we have to add a new third party app okay um copy or call it maybe my main app here okay the redirect URL should be um, maybe just a login page, doesn't really matter, okay? If it's not logged in, it should be um, whatever, myapp.com slash login. And then I'm gonna copy the client ID, I'm gonna add it here, and I'm gonna copy the client secret and copy it here. So let me just summarize again what I did here, okay? So basically, we have the option of just fetching data from the other application, Again, this is our main application. We connect to our secondary application and we can fetch the listings data. We also have the ability to connect the user accounts. For this, we created a client ID and client secret. This allows us to, or this allows users from this application to log in here basically in this application without creating a new account. And for this, we have to add this client ID, client secret, and add a redirect URL. What is that? This is just if the user isn't logged in, where should he be redirected to? And usually you would have then a login page or a sign up page. Hey, uh, you're not logged in, please lo log in or sign up. We don't have that page here yet, so I just create a random uh, redirect URL, which doesn't exist, but just to showcase that to you. So now we have these two things added here, and I'm just gonna jump in right away. And here, I'm gonna add a repeating group in my main application. And now keep in mind, we don't have the data type listing here. We have listing data, which is something else, but we don't have listing as in our secondary app here. So in my repeating group, I'm gonna say, okay, type of content is not gonna be listing data. It is gonna be, let's scroll down, on hover effect listing. You see the name of my secondary application and then its data type. This is now listed as our data type we have access to. And now I can simply say, all right, let's just, just style this thing here, okay. Um, data source should be um, do a search for, or actually no, not do a search for, should be get data from get on hover effect listing. Okay, you could sort it and results. And now I have access to that and I can enter here the information and say, all right, current sales name. And you can see I have access to the data fields of our other database. So the unhover effect tart listing has the fields name and I can access that. So just so I understand, we're, right now we're in this main application, which doesn't have a listings uh, data type, but we connected this application to our other application, which has a listings data type, and we can fetch that in our main application without doing anything else because we connected them. So now if I preview this application, okay, we should see our listing information here in this repeating group. So let's wait a second. Great, you can see we have listing one, listing two, listing three, listing four. Again, this is fetched from the other database and the other application. If I now go back to my other application, you can see we have four listings here. I'm gonna create a new one. I'm just gonna um, listing whatever, create. We refresh the page now. You will see we will have that fifth listing, listing 3423, three, also now immediately present in our main application. So a super easy and quick way to connect applications and pull data from one application to another. 
Obviously, you could uh, fabricate it so that you can also send over data to the other application. This would be doable by going to backend workflows and exposing a workflow. So I'm going to show you that as an example. So let's create, I'm again in my secondary application now. I'm going to create a new backend workflow. Yeah, this will be create. Let's just call create listing. This will take one parameter. This one parameter will be name of type text. And this will do something. It will create a new thing. It will create a new listing of type name. And the name will be the parameter name. So really simple backend workflow. Now if we go back to our main application. I'm going to go to plugins, app connector. I'm going to refresh app metadata. I'm going to add another API call, create listing, the one we just created. We're going to use that as an action and we're going to authenticate with the API key. So now I'm going to add a simple input here, which will be the input where I can enter the listing name. I'm going to add a button. Okay. Create. When this is pressed, we want to use our plugin run on hover effect dot create listing. The name should be input ace value. So now again, what happens? We have our form here. We're going to create a new listing in the customer facing app. And this new listing will actually not be created in this database. It will be created in this database. So let's just watch that now. Okay, so we have our app data here, we have these listings here, and in our main application, I'm going to write example, I'm going to click on create. Okay, we're going to go back to this application. And you can see immediately, we have our name example here, we created this listing, but we created it from another application. Okay, um, and it works perfectly fine. And now here, if I uh, just refresh that page again, you will see the, the listing we created here was sent over to the other application. And because we get this repeating group from the other application, it's immediately visible here. Yeah, great. So um, just the last thing I want to show you is to how to authenticate. Also quite simple. You add a button, for example, and you say, log in with my um, host account as an example. Okay. You're going to say, okay, start at a workflow. When this is pressed, I want to sign the user up not with the classic, but sign up with a social network. Okay. Why ever they, what, uh, for whatever reason they call it social network, it isn't a social network, but you can see we have a new provider, which is our bubble app on hover effect tutorial. Okay. And now if I preview this, um, if I click this, there's two possibilities. Either I am logged in, in the secondary app and will be automatically locked in here now as well with this account. In our case, I'm not logged in, so it will redirect me to the redirect URL, when, which in our case is, um, what do we provide? We provided this URL. So let's just try that. I don't know what, where this points to, uh, but you can see it's not uh, um, valid, okay? Um, but just as you can see, this will work fine. And yeah, so basically if you would be logged in, as I mentioned already, um, you would also be logged in here when you click the button in the main application. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, lots of ways you can connect to or even more obviously bubble apps to one another, get data, create data, trigger other kinds of workflows. You could trigger a workflow to send an email in the other app. Um, you can even connect user accounts or basically log in with one account in another app. So lots of possibilities there. Quite powerful feature I think not many people know about yet. Um, but definitely really helpful if you build something like a marketplace uh, or even other kinds of applications. So thank you for watching and I'm going to see you guys for the next tutorial of NoCoHQ. Bye.